I ask you to join with me in welcoming my brother. He's no stranger to you, the Southwestern Regional Minister of the Nation of Islam from Houston, Texas, our brother, Brother Abdul Halim Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be on to you. Welcome to Connect the Dots. I'm your host, Brother Abdul Halim Muhammad. You're listening to KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Connect the Dots right here on KPFT. You ask yourself the question, what is a classic? It's a movie you've seen 10 times, but you still watch it when they play it again. It's that jacket or that coat that always seem to be in fashion. That song that makes you sing or cry. Classic is something that stands the test of time. KPFT is a classic example of a classic. And KPFT is your local source for great music, news, and information. Right here, right now, and every day. So please make the contribution that keeps a wide variety of music, information, and news coming to the community and most importantly to you right now and while you're at it why don't you make your contribution a sustaining one go to kpft.org kpft.org or call 713-526-5738 713-526-kpft now beloved connect the dots crew the nation of islam is just concluded its annual Savior's Day celebration, which commemorates the birth anniversary of the founder of the Nation of Islam in the West, Master Fahd Muhammad, who is the teacher of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, delivered an address entitled Swan Song. Many perceived it to be his swan song, but as you will hear, it intends to be someone else's swan song, not just his. That being said, did you watch the State of the Union address and the response of the Republican governor? Mr. Biden did the best he could to present a united front and to unite the country in his address. However, when I listen to Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds and her response, it's evident to me, no matter how hard Mr. Biden tried, this country is hopelessly divided along partisan lines. It is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan who says partisan politics must die if America is to live. And so what happens if partisan politics don't die? Does that mean that America will not live? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves when we look at the local elections and the statewide elections. And we see that the governor has uh, prevailed over his uh, in-party rivals by pivoting to the right. What happens if he should prevail in the general election and keep the position that he had without moderating somewhat towards the center to accommodate the rest of Texas who did not vote for him? Or should Mr. O'Rourke prevail and he has pivoted to the left? Will he move towards the center to accommodate those Texans that did not vote for him? You see, this partisanship is quite dangerous. We know that we set up a two-party system in this country and Sometimes we have independent candidates that uh, garner support and uh, can oftentimes 
uh, make a good showing for themselves in electoral politics. However, we're looking at this country is split, red state, blue state, the coastal cities, coastal states versus the middle America, south versus north, east versus west, young versus old. It just uh, doesn't bode well. And so I want you to listen to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's swan song address. And I'm playing it so that you in the Connected Dots audience, you at KPFT, can listen and hear for yourself. I don't want it filtered through the media or dropped in clips um, that will be spun uh, and explained. I respect you enough that you can listen for yourself. Remember our motto on Connected Dots is the people are smarter than they think. And we don't want to insult your intelligence. We believe you are intelligent, sentient human beings who can decide for yourself what is good for you and what is not. So the next voice you hear will be the Honorable Minister Lord Farquhar, right here on KPFT, your community station. The last time my teacher came before the nation, he had a seat and a crown. <laughs> I don't have the crown, but I got to see. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but he, Allah, the originator, who originated himself and from himself, God's came representing the oneness of the creator. He willed into existence one who in the fullness of time would perfect his creation. And that one was born February 26, 1877. That man born to rule, born to master the creation, born to show us the potential of each and every human being, born. to come after the lost sheep, born to come to a people that were considered dead. What would he do? He would search for one to whom he could give a weighty word and give him the hardest job ever given to any human being who has lived on our planet. What kind of job is that? <laughs> I 
you better choose the right man when you're going to give him a job like that. And so he looked among us and he found among us a magnificently beautiful human being not made by this world and its educational institutions. He went only to the fourth grade of school and being a son of the soil of Georgia, he, like most Georgia young men, had to do his work in the field, picking cotton, doing what the master gave us to do. The weight of a dead nation and the weight of what it takes to raise somebody who is totally dead. The only thing that is not dead is that he's walking. He's talking. He's thinking. But because he was from a people robbed and spoiled, stripped of our own humanity, treated on the level of the beasts of the field. He had to raise Elijah Muhammad from a dead level to a living perpendicular and assign him a mission. Master Farad Muhammad said he, he would talk to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and ask him, why don't you accept the job? There's nobody to do it but you and me. And the messenger would just look down. The Savior said, and the messenger said, he, he, he never spoke. He, he was so deep in thought. When the Savior was talking to him, he couldn't respond what you would think in a proper manner. So Master Farad Muhammad asked him, why won't you accept? the job and get the big name. He wasn't in, interested in no big name. He knew that job was a big job. But the comforting words that he gave his student, I will be with you. He said, if you will back me, here am I, send me. Elijah Muhammad, what a teacher. I'm so sorry that my brother Malcolm, who was my inspiration and my first teacher, didn't stay in the class long enough to become the master that Elijah Muhammad wanted to make him. So after 12 years, he 
he ran into a problem. Life is always presenting the living with a problem. A problem that will make you or break you. But as Brother Ishmael has been preaching for a few weeks now, you were made to conquer whatever life presents. You did it when you were sperm. How come you think you can't do it now? Emitted into a hostile environment with the competition of a hundred million to a billion other sperms who had the same thing in mind. We got to fertilize that egg. And when you made it, and I made it, and we made it, we were ready to come forth into life and face anything that life presents. And with the mind of a conqueror, and the Spirit of God. Anything that came our way in order to get where we are today, we had to conquer. You are a generation that is born from ancestors that came through the roughest of times, the hardest of trials, the depth of privation. Our ancestors died longing for a generation that would come forth, that would not bend, would not bow, would not scratch when they don't itch, but stand tall. We are black people who were brought to America to be made slaves, beaten and brutalized, misused and abused. Our women were the playthings of a slave master who used your womb to bring forth more slaves that with every slave that was nurtured as a slave, the slave master could become rich. The slave died. The woman that birthed to him died, but children were born under that cycle of pain. Children were born in that period of total degradation. Children were born. Don't you think that people who are under a burden don't know how to pray? We learned prayer the hard way because we didn't come up the smooth side of the mountain. We came up the roughest side that a mountain could provide us 
but here we are. The strongest of the strong. Here we are. I want to introduce you today to the Son of Man. Uh, happy birthday, dear Savior. Happy birthday, Savior, because the dead are rising. Happy birthday, Savior. The blind eyes are opening and the deaf ears are opening and the stop tongue is now speaking with the voice of a man. Happy birthday, Savior. We traded in our bottle, our pipe, our smoke for a scripture that began to teach us who we are. As women, we threw off the mind of a harlot. We threw off the mind of a woman that is only for the wicked pleasure of sick, depraved men. When we knew we were the first creation of God, His words were, accept your own and be yourself. And we started the journey. The journey of life. Oh, we had great leaders before the coming of Master Farad Muhammad and we thank Allah so much. in looking back on our slave history. In every tribe, in every family, there was a man, there was a woman who had light in the midst of the darkness. In every tribe, under every circumstance, there was a woman who cried out for a child who would deliver us from this condition. See, there's a, a law in nature that our teacher taught us that when you are deprived of something that is naturally your birthright, you long for it. And in that longing, the longer you are deprived of it, the stronger your desire for relief from your burden grows. The longer the period of suffering, the stronger the womb and the sperm that produces a son. So I know, I know, I, I know, I, I never could have made it 
without God and my teacher. I never could have made it. Ah, oh, but I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm wiser. Because I held on to my teacher. And now he's making me the master of the condition, the master of the circumstance, <laughs> and the master of the enemy. If only a Malcolm could have stayed in the class, if only Ali could have stayed in the class. If only his son, Wadid Dean, would have attended the class. It wouldn't have been necessary for me to be here today. But Elijah Muhammad, You can't tell me you got a great teacher and your love is shallow. You can't tell me you have a great leader and your love is fickle. You can't tell me you got a great teacher, a great prophet, and you can only hang on while the prophet is among you, but the moment the prophet is gone, vanity and envy and all these wicked characteristics manifest because each one wants a page. Poor prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He fought the good fight. He was true to what he taught. He was the em embodiment of the spirit of what he taught. And when he left, a great disciple arose, Abu Bakr. But when a great one leaves, there are always those who desire his place, but as the messenger said, they want my crown, but they don't want to pay my price. Oh, they said many terrible things about me. He wants to be the leader. He wants to be seen. He don't really love Elijah Muhammad. He's an actor. You should go to school and learn how to act like me. Because if acting is what brought me from a musician singing dirty calypso songs, <laughs> writing dirty calypso songs, trying to be better but didn't know how. That was not my calling. One day, 
when the play I had written was playing right here at Den Dunbar High School. There were two shows, one in the morning, in the afternoon, and one in the evening, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came to the evening performance, but I didn't know it. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> oh, and did I sing, and did I dance, and did I play my violin, and oh, I did all that I knew how to do. In that world's life, some of you beautiful brothers and sisters, you got so much talent. But the one thing you don't have is a moral compass. <laughs> that money becomes your master. And when money and fame become your master, Satan who has the money, Satan is master of what you want to master. He makes us an offer that we can't refuse. And we end up selling our souls. Some of you love the minister, but you can't come too close. Some of you really love the minister. But you can't talk about me in certain circles. Some of you love me, and, and I'm like a lovely song. And so, in introducing you to the Son of Man, could be an act I could have been a great one because the Satan is a great actor he teaches acting school and some of us have become good students in, in Satan's acting class we don't know how to be real. We don't know how to be sincere. We don't know how to be really committed to what we say we're committed to. But liars after a major liar. I was in that world. And I was good at what I did. Very good. And I used to wonder, God, why did you give me all these gifts? What's the purpose? Because if you have a gift and you find it, you want to know what is the purpose, how you should use your gift. See, and when you don't know God, but you got a gift. You don't know God. But you have something so wonderful that they want to exploit it. And I'll give you money. And you'll play the exclusive clubs. And you'll have a lot of women. If that's what you like. And you'll have a lot of men if that's what you like. Oh, I was in that kind of world. My brother Harry Belafonte was playing in Broadway a show called Almanac. And he was chosen to play the part in a movie in Hollywood and my brother got the part which left the part in 
almanac for somebody who could sing in calypso and dance. So I came down from Boston and uh, I tried to sing and dance, play my little quattro. And I was told, you know, I, I didn't get the part. But then they told me, well, you know, the man who can give you the part, he's homosexual. This is how you lose your soul. When you compromise your integrity as a human being, as a man, as a black man, and allow the enemy to have his way with you, male or female. Beautiful black women, talented black women. But since Satan always wanted to see you as a tart, some lovely sex creature. So he doesn't feature your voice. He features what goes along with it. And then he accentuates the negative and diminishes the value of the positive. and you sell your soul. Satan wins again. Satan wins again. You like that part in the show? Walcott was my name then, or the charmer. Yeah, I, I, I would like the part. <laughs> you become a victim of your desires. That's why we have a prayer that says, you know, that if it's beside Allah, we don't want nothing that is besides him. So when they told me about the homosexual that seemed to like me, I said, tell him, if my talent is not enough for me to get the part, tell him keep it. If you can't walk away from money, from fame, from money, and become a whore, then every time you commit a whoredom, your talent is diminished. Your strength as a woman or a man is diminished. You sold out. Greetings, this is your brother, Dr. Abdul Halim Muhammad, the host of Connect the Dots radio show here on KPFT. KPFT is a community resource. We depend on your support in order to broadcast over these sacred airwaves. We know that you could be listening to any other station, but you choose to listen to KPFT. Why? Because you know you're gonna hear the best music. You know you're not gonna have any commercial. And we feature in-depth reporting. So look, call 713-526-5738, 713-526-KPFT, or go to www.kpft.org and make a pledge to connect the dots so we can continue to sustain this radio experiment. 713-526-5738, 713-526-KPFT. Houston's Community Station. In my growing up in show business, I always 
had prostitutes that were my friends. They loved me. And they protected me as a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old who was budding. Old 40-year-old woman came in the club and I had on a black onyx ring and after the show, people lined up all around like they lined up out here. When I was 16, they were lined around the block And she asked me to sit, and she would, you know, buy me a drink. What do you drink? Oh, I, I don't drink, but I, I, I'll take a ginger ale. See, when you start down that road, anything you compromise of your character it leads to a greater compromise, a greater compromise until you're nothing. If you can't turn wrong down and putting your trust in a higher power to get you what you want without selling your soul, then the enemy has robbed you because you're not connected to the giver of your gift. Well, what has that got to do with the swan song? Uh, 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 hang in there with me because a lot of you be singing before the night is over. You thought you were coming to hear mine? Is that what you came out to see? <laughs> well, I'm going to sing a song for you. Because I want you to live and not die from the song you sing. Well, I, 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 were you going to retire? Retire? How can a, a teacher of wisdom from the God of wisdom and the messenger of wisdom retire? As ignorant as we are. No, 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 no. There's no swan song like that for me. But when I get finished, you may find a song in there for you. And I'm going to help you to sing it strong. Fair cons, closing down the shop. The nation's finished. <laughs> Cause they, they ain't got they ain't got another fire car. Tell you something, you don't need another one. This one is sufficient. You didn't hear me. Maybe my note was too high and the resonance too deep.
because you can't replace me. If I do, they, they won't see me. They want me to sit back in my chair. Oh, sit down, brothers and sisters. We just getting started. That's good. Oh, yeah, I want to see the first world. I got a lot of things to say today because it is a swan singing. There is a swan called the trumpeter swan. That's a bad swan. <laughs> he don't wait till he's dead to sing. He's singing all the time. <laughs> Let me tell you what a swan song is. But don't forget, before I finish today, you're going to hear something that's just for you. When you hear the note that God designed for you, hold it in your mind. Because if you play that note right, you may come out of death into life again. Because God did not come for you to die. He came for us to live and he came to give us life and give it to us in abundance. Now, if I lose my place, I got those who can help me. I can't give you the notes because ain't, I ain't following them no way. <laughs> when I come out, I read you. You are the notes that I want to sing. You are the people of God. And you are the ones that God came 9,000 miles for. He threatened Elijah Muhammad not to lose the form of one of the lost founds. He never wrote Elijah Muhammad Best wishes to you. He said, best wishes to you and the whole 17 million. Because the value of Elijah Muhammad to Master Fard Muhammad is how he would come after you and get you out of a dead state and make you into a god. While, while I'm on that subject, see, some of the people that are around me, they don't like to be called student minister. I'm sorry, I, I thought I would talk to the class. See? See, the problem with you and me and us, I put myself in it because God has saved me from it. But I want to help you 
get out of that position that you don't like being a student. See, when the, when the devil confers a degree on you, he's finished with you. How about that one? But he's finished with you that he's taught you enough that he can use you for his purpose because he's trained you well to bow down to him. I'm a student, but I'm in the classroom of God, which you soon will see. I don't know what course you study, but I'm a student of God. Growing into one. I'm going to meet my father to see if he approves me for my diploma. I don't want to lose these points because they're so nice. Thank you, Allah, for leading me in this way. See. The, uh, the love of God is the key to the manifestation of who you are. All of you are great. There's not one of you here in the mosque, in the tent, in the masala, in the gymnasium, wherever you are in this building, every one of you is great. And God is so beautiful, he shares his greatness with us. That's when a jackass is born. Oh, you didn't hear me. See, if you can run fast, and you're on the track team and you beat everybody running. That's a gift. But because you run fast, you ain't got there yet. Because the race of life ain't for the swift. Excuse me for saying ain't. <laughs> the race of life is not for the strong. The race of life is to the one, male or female, who can endure the process until you accomplish the goal for which God brought you out of your mother's womb and gave you life. Was I, did I miss a point? <laughs> See, you, uh, you're in a classroom today that the minister is supposed to sing a swan song. And, and you, you've heard of the minister, you know something of the minister and some of you know more of the minister but you don't know me at all some of you that walk with me don't know me I'm sorry I have to tell you the truth some of you that belong to me don't know me All right.
Thank you for listening to another edition of Connect the Dots. If you want to follow us, go on Facebook, look for the Connect the Dots crew group, and become a part of the team. Remember, they, them, and theirs can never overcome us, our, and we, as long as we'll subordinate I, me, and mine. Seek the truth. Get organized so we can get free. So until next week, may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.